What is up guys, Jerome here, and today we're talking everything raid comps in Season of Discovery. Not just the best speedrun comps though, I also want to talk about things like the best balance comps, things to maximize your loot as well. And I'll be covering some pub comps as well, and the very best gimmick comps, the ones that can get you some big reddit clout. So we've got a lot to cover, let's get right to it. Before we talk comps though, I want to discuss the different approaches to the game. There are really two main approaches. The first camp is the one that wants to clear the raid as early as possible. Maybe you want bragging rights of being the first guild on your server to clear the new raid. Or you might even want to be the next Echo and be pushing for world first for all the glory. And then of course, once that title is secure, you want to clear the raid as fast as you can. The second camp has a different goal. This is the average player camp and they want to clear the raid consistently. They really don't want to be running back over and over again. And they also want to maximize loot drops so class stacking becomes a less viable option. Even though they're not speedrunning, they still want raid times to be fast enough so they can fit other things into the night like working on more characters. Whatever your goal is though, I've created several comps that'll hopefully get your brain thinking in new ways about Season of Discovery. This does have the potential to be the most broken and fun version of WoW we've ever seen. So let's start thinking outside the box and make some raid comps. No matter what you decide with a speedrun comp, you are gambling somewhat. Runes have been nerfed and changed several times, so your perfect comp may end up being far weaker than you thought. However, we do know a few things about Classic that should still be true. Hunters level really fast, and they'll obtain prebiz more easily than any other class. Just look at recent videos of people soloing items like the Furbog Medicine Pouch at level 25. If you want to clear the raid the first week, a hunter stack makes a lot of sense. They do get new runes like Explosive Shot and Sniper Training for increased critical strike as well. Plus, at least one hunter is always required in your raid for Aspect of the Lion, at least if you're Horde. The other required DPS is always going to be a Feral Druid. That way you can get Wild Strikes for Wind Fury to buff up the tanks and the DPS. You might notice that we're missing a Mage, but Intellect Scrolls and Vendor Water are both stronger anyways. Plus, I just value the Hellstones and the Summoning more in case anybody dies. As for your tank, they could be anything. To me, Prot Warrior makes the most sense to spam Sunder with a new Devastate Rune. I'm also very sold on Double Priest in Phase 1. I do plan for one of them to be holy while the other one is disc so they don't overlap too much. For our second speedrun comp, I wanted to make a warrior stack. This comp would be gambling in a different direction which is directly towards warriors. They're simming really well and if those projections are even close to accurate, arms will be so strong. Personally, I'm not quite as sold on warriors until later phases but I do know some guilds plan to go in this direction. Now that we've gotten speedrun comps out of the way, I wanted to talk about balance comps. The first balance comp is very low risk and it'll have nearly guaranteed success in the raid. This would also be probably the best comp for maximizing loot since there really isn't much class overlap. Just like before, we've got to start with a druid who'll be the off tank as needed. And we definitely need a hunter for kings as well. And then we just go for a rainbow in terms of class colors. As an example, I've swapped the warrior tank out for a shaman tank, though anything could work here like a prop paladin. The biggest key to this comp is the balanced druid, who can become a third healer as needed depending on the fight. Plus a second druid means two battle reses, which is fantastic. Instead of a two priest healer comp, I have swapped in a resto shaman as well. My reasoning is that this is the same company that developed Titan Rune Gamma. If we're not getting feared across BFD during at least two boss fights, I'll be disappointed. Though that does mean Tremor Totem is a must-have. Another low-risk balance comp would be to run a caster stack. In this build, we're relying on Homunculus to provide an over-negative 1000 armor debuff as well as the Demo Shout. In Group 1, that frees up the warrior to just blast maximum DPS. Or it even allows you to do something else entirely like an Enhanced Shaman. Meanwhile, in Group 2, the Elemental Shaman has the ability to bring Shamanistic Rage for mana regen for the whole party, which is stacked with casters. In a caster stack like this, the Arcane Mage should fit really well too. They provide near priest level healing over a longer period of time with their high mana pool and their evocate. Moving away from realistic comps, I also wanted to share a few gimmick comps. The first would be an affliction lock stack based on Master Channeler. My early math puts the base of Master Channeler at over 26 heals per second. All we need to do is add in some tank healing for our main tank affliction lock and everybody else should be relatively self-sustaining. The second gimmick comp would be a fire mage stack. The early math I did had fire mages really blasting. If the additional fights we didn't see at BlizzCon are really short, this might actually be viable. Though no matter which comp you go with, you're now armed with far more options. If I helped you out, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed for more Season of Discovery guides. Until next time, keep preparing and I'll see you in Azeroth.